And oh! We ended up in the middle of a National Geographic show. That's a glacier behind <laughs> us. Uh, are you kidding me? Let's go! Good morning. This week we're in the Kenai Peninsula and we're gonna show you all the awesome stops we make as we explore this region of Alaska. Right now, we are in a small, tiny town called Hope and this is one of the first gold rush towns in Alaska. It's actually a commonly skipped area, but we think that that's a big mistake and we're gonna show you why. This place has so much rich history. It's only a 17 mile detour off the Seward Highway and we think it's totally worth making the extra effort to come out here to see the Turnigan Arm and check out this amazing gold mining history here. Hope has a lot of fun activities that you can get into, from camping, rafting, to a museum, and even panning for gold. Yeah. Us? Yeah. We just got here today. These guys back here just totally pegged Steven as a guy in a band. Yeah, you, look like, you look like a member of the band. He I'm... is. <laughs> This is the kind of place we like. They have this great little museum here. There's a host in the main room who gave us a bit of the history. Very brief, but just concise and what we needed to know about how Hope came to be and also the nearby community of Sunrise. Now we're in the back area, which has all of these old buildings that are preserved, a schoolhouse, a cabin. These are really great ways to see what Hope was like when all of those people came in hopes of striking gold. for gold mining. I think this is the blacksmith shop. the blacksmith. came here because it's along the Sterling Highway, most of the way to Homer, which is our destination for today. And it is the westernmost point to which you can drive in North America. Instead, we ended up in the middle of a National Geographic show. Oh my God, there are bald eagles on the beach. Oh, there's one right there. That's freaking amazing. Look at that wingspan. Okay, warning, this is super gross, but really fascinating. <laughs> wow. Wow. I can't even tell what kind of fish that is, but it's huge.
Now it's time to call it a night and get some rest at this awesome harvest host we found in Homer. We've got a big day planned for tomorrow. We have a kind of gloomy, kind of drizzly, rainy morning here, but we are in Homer on the Homer Spit. Homer is the halibut capital of the world and a hugely popular destination for fishers or anglers as I'm learning they're called. So of course we're here and we're gonna try our hand at some fishing too. By we, I really mean Steven, I'm not gonna bother. But I'll uh, do the photographing and filming of his attempts and with any luck, he's gonna catch us some dinner for tonight. We started our day at the Department of Fish and Game. It cost $15 for a one-day license and then an additional $15 for a salmon stand. I really would love to catch a halibut today, but it's not likely, at least not from shore. That usually happens more when you take a charter boat and you're out in deeper water, but it is possible. Worst case scenario, I catch a salmon, which is a completely acceptable alternative. They have an awesome loaner program here at the Department of Fish and Game. They'll loan you a rod and reel and even the tackle that you need at no cost. <laughs> What'd you get a boot? I think we got something. Uh... <laughs> we got something? Don't let the seagulls steal it. Ah! Keep going, keep going, you got it! My gosh, how long is that line? <gasps> you got something! Whoa! Pull it in! Pull it in! <gasps> oh, it's super creepy. It's like one of those rock fishy things. Oh, that is a giant mouth. Holy moly. Super skinny. So that was a rock fish, but it had a bunch of worms crawling out of its flesh and body. I don't know, that might be normal. And maybe just cleaning it up and cooking it gets rid of that, but it was skeeving me out. So we put it back in the water. All right, we might have something. What's it gonna be? Doesn't seem like much. It's probably small. Oh. Oh, it's just a little one. Let's let it go. I'm gonna let this guy go back. We didn't catch any halibut over at the other spot, so now that the tide is a little bit lower, we came over here to the fishing hole, which is another place that a lot of people come, and we got some tips that at low tide, this is a great place to get king salmon right now. So I'm setting up to try to get some of those. King salmon for dinner. Hope so. Either that or chili in the van. <laughs>
frustrating. We've been at this for hours and they just keep swimming by. We can see them just under the surface, like maybe six, seven feet out from the shore. Not that far at all. And some of them are huge right here. There's a ton. I wish that this could see what my sunglasses see because they're all under the surface there. But they're just not biting. We've tried lures, we've tried baits. And by we, I mean Steven. <gasps> One just flopped right next to his line. Yeah, they're here. They're just not biting, and I want dinner. <laughs> Real that fishing! All right, these people over here are fly fishing, and this is the second one they caught. So I think that might be the way to go next time. What do you think? Should we call it? I think we're going to call it, yeah. No fish for us. At least not that we're catching ourselves. But uh, I think we're going to go order some off of a menu instead. still having halibut, starting with this mango halibut ceviche. And since we're in the halibut capital of the world, we got the halibut fish and chips as well. And yeah, we both got the same thing. We usually share meals when we're out, but we have worked on quite the appetite today, just watching all the fish swim by us and not by us. So we're each having our own today. appreciate the kind of places we get to spend our nights. Yes, it's a gravel parking lot. We're right on the water with incredible snow-capped mountains in the background. I mean, look at this. There were eagles on the beach the other day. There probably are here too. All right, two miles, here we go. Easy. Today, we're making our way back up and across the Kenai Peninsula towards Seward. But we're gonna take a couple days to actually get to Seward because we wanna just kind of relax and take it easy for a little bit. Plus, it's a holiday right now, 4th of July, it's tomorrow, and the place is kind of swarming. So we figure we'll find a place to boondock tonight and probably stay there a couple days and just chill for a bit, which sounds really nice. Yeah. We made a stop off of Sterling Highway to hike Russian River Falls, which is 2.3 miles each way out and back. It's a gravel path, but it's pretty wide and there's really not much in the way of elevation gain. So it's considered a pretty easy path and I'm still operating with a sprained ankle. So if I can do it, I would definitely agree that it's easy. Always on the lookout for bears. Starting to hear the falls, I think we're getting close. The hope is that when we get there, we're gonna see some salmon working their way up the falls to where they're gonna spawn.
fish jumping up the falls, but it is still such a beautiful place to hike to. And we got some birds in there, which is pretty cool. We thought we'd try our luck up here. It's where the sport fishing takes place. So we figured, well, that makes sense. That would be where the fish are. But it's about 600 yards out, which is a little bit more of a hike. And we ran into some fishermen pretty quickly who were coming back from there. And they said there's no action there. We're just as likely to see something here. So saved us the effort and we're gonna make our way back to the van. Woo, you are dusty. Weren't those pants black when we started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here are the details if you wanna come here yourself. Just put Russian River Falls Trailhead into Google Maps and it will get you there. But it's just off of Sterling Highway in Cooper Landing. You can park right at the trailhead for $14 or you can park a mile away in the overflow parking for only $5. We went for $14 because of my ankle and I think that was definitely the right choice. Even if I didn't have the ankle issue. There are also a lot of pullouts, camping spaces, boondocking spaces, and trailheads all along the Sterling Highway too. So you can come here without plans. You're always taking a chance, of course, especially in the summer when it's the most busy. But uh, well, that's what we're doing. And so far we've had good luck. Hope I didn't just jinx us for tonight though. You can even camp here if you've got a tent. days. How amazing is this? We totally lucked out. Got a spot right by the water. This is going to be a beautiful 4th of July holiday. That's a glacier behind <laughs> us. Uh. It is gorgeous. I don't know if it's registering the color here, but we can actually see the aqua blue from this far yeah. away under that dirt. And oh my gosh, we are at Kenai Fjords National Park. Almost. We're not quite in the park yet, but that is the park right there. And we're going to go do a hike to Exit Glacier real quick and then check out the town of Seward. Let's go. Wow. Getting closer. This is pretty fantastic. These clouds. Normally you can see still snowy mountains all back there. I'm thinking that's a black bear paw. Are there any in there? I don't know, but I think this is another black bear paw. We also saw about three piles of moose poo. So <laughs> we are entering wildlife territory now. <laughs> so we are not quite half a mile from the parking area. We could definitely go back or we can go half a mile up to Glacier Overlook. We're going out. The stretch to the overlook gets just a little more challenging and it's a little more uphill, but still I would classify this as pretty easy as far as hikes go. And I have a feeling it's gonna be worth a little bit of challenge. You got this? We can do it. We were down there. <laughs> Look right there.
The town of Seward is really quaint. It's got several food options here, but the main draw is that it's the entrance to Kenai Fjords National Park, where you could charter boat tours from here into the park and also a lot of fishing tours. So we stopped at the Safeway grocery store here in town the other day, and it was like, it was expensive even by Alaska standards. We were pretty floored by the prices, and there aren't really many options as far as doing groceries here in town. We're also finding that to be the case with the uh, fast food and counter service <laughs> food here too. Man, this town is pricey. Tacos are $18.50, are you kidding me? <laughs> So I think we're gonna skip dining out for lunch and head back to the van, maybe make ourselves some quesadillas or something. And then we're gonna figure out if we're gonna take one of these tours into the Kenai Fjords National Park. And just like that, we are back at our camp. Yeah. This has been such an amazing boondocking spot. Yeah. Anyhow, Seward ended up being a little bit on the pricey side for us, and we're headed to Valdez next, which promises a lot of similar things in terms of wildlife, glaciers, and it turns out that it's also more affordable than Seward is. <laughs> we can probably dine out while we're there. How exciting is Excellent. that? And the cruises that you can take to the glaciers to see puffins, that sort of thing, those are probably about, I would say on average, $40 per person less, which we definitely like. That's considerable. There are reasons to see Kenai Fjords instead of Valdez. Namely, there's a better chance there of seeing orcas, but we're gonna take our chances because it's not guaranteed in either case and you do have to do one of the longer and of course more expensive tours in order to see those orcas. So we're gonna take our chances in Valdez, save a little bit of money, but if you're only in Kenai Fjords, definitely wanna check out one of those cruises because yeah. those are the way to see the park. They looked really good. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. We'll see you next see you time next from time. Valdez.